For my topic today, I'm going to cover the safety in an electrical field. Um, I personally work for a company called Groves Construction. I work on the substation side, but we cover things like the transmission and distribution power lines, the substation, electricians, and even concrete. With these four divisions, they all condone electricity. So in all these four places, you could often have electrical hazards or electrical safety procedures that if you do not follow, you could often get very hurt or even killed if you're not careful. I work on the substation side because I'm getting experience to be a project manager and that is my current field on this electrical side of the company. I'm going to cover the hazard awareness of electrical. I'm going to, my second point is the maintenance and repairs of an electrical, the lockout tagout procedure, and the safety procedures for unqualified workers. These four points are very important in the electrical field because they all consist of matters that could get somebody hurt or maybe even save somebody's life. The basic safety level is OSHA 10. Most workers that are doing things like this have OSHA 10s because a lot of jobs require this for you to even walk on the site. Um, you can even go as high as OSHA 80, which is a four year degree, and you can even get a master's in this now. They just came out with it. Um, this is a, we do have safety qualified workers who have these degrees that we have 10 OSHA workers that who have or are safety guys. They um, often come to different job sites and check on you and these are the ones you perform things like even as simple as a drug test and they give you your PPE. So for my first point, I'm going to use hazard awareness. So things like hazard awareness would be your power machines and your tools, um, cords, plugs, outlets and circuits wiring switches and breakers, and grounding for tools and equipment and trucks, like things like that, and the proper PPE like I covered before. Your PPE is rubber gloves and rubber sleeves, and you could even put on a full suit that keeps you from getting shot. These things can fail, and they it's not 100% guaranteed they will save your life, but it is a very good chance it can. Things like machinery and power tools, of course, you never know what can happen with things like this. If somebody's obviously trying to change a saw blade out, and they still have the saw plugged in to the outlet with power on it, then obviously you should probably undo that so they don't actually cut a finger off and stuff like that. Of course, wiring switches and circuit breakers, these are all under a lot of power. It at least would be 20,000 volts. 20,000 volts is enough to kill you if you are not careful, but things can go wrong. These things can explode and other things happen, which could risk your, you are risking your life working on these things. These are all simple points that you do learn about in your OSHA 10. This is the simplest it could get. It does get a lot more technical as the farther you go through. My second point is maintenance and repairs. Workers do need to be qualified to do certain maintenance and repairs by OSHA. OSHA is the, back, the backbone of safety. They do make the laws. That's what it stands for Occupational Safety and Health Association. Um, these maintenance repairs, they can kill you if you do not know what you're doing because obviously you you could be going back off somebody else's work, maybe even somebody you don't even know or another company or whatever, or it could be 50, year old, 50 years old whenever they don't have the same technology that we do now. Um, that is what causes a lot of things. There is a big chance that you could do it different than them, but always coming chasing somebody else's work, you don't know for sure what they did and it can put you at a risk. Just while maintenance and repairs are so detrimental because you got to at least keep it up to date so that things like this are easily to, easier to cover and maybe not so many issues could be found upon in years down the road or whatever maybe it's make it easier for the next guy or maybe the guy after that problem area number three is the lockout and tag out procedure a lot of people know what this is it is a topic that is covered everywhere even from coal mines to any electrical company and what it is it is a little thing that is red handled and you can put a lock on it it looks like this so with this lockout tag out what you do is you say you have a breaker the breaker every house or whatever has a main breaker it's just a switch you pull down and it can shut the power off or if you pull it back up it'll turn the power back on to whatever it is well what you do is you can it has a lock on it and you put that lockout tag out on it and you click your lock with your name and info where you work at whatever and lock it up so that if somebody 
is trying to turn power on, they can't because they can see that Mr. John Doe is in the house or whatever working on electrical systems from Groves Construction or whatever company. A lot of people are lazy about this. They do go around it, and this is what has caused a bunch of lives in the past. And it's as simple as it can get because it is the first step you should do. You should go check to see if somebody else's tag is in there, and you should see. And if they are, want you to put yours in. You should go put. You should go see what they are doing to the circuit so that you know that if they shut power off, you know what's going on or whatever. Just so you are both aware, and you should explain to them what you are doing. The last thing that I'm going to cover is the safety procedures for unqualified workers. Obviously, a person that is not a journeyman electrician or whatever is not going to know on their first day what to do. They do not know every single safety hazard or safety procedure or stuff like that. And certain jobs have different things, and that's another topic that could be if you wanted the nitty-gritty in it for different specs. A lot of things can compose electrical shock, and if you do not know that it would, then obviously you would not know any better if you should touch it or not, or what it consists of. It could be as simple as a screwdriver slips as you're putting a receptacle and touch the power wire, and it might not kill you, but it don't. It ain't gonna feel very good. Um, things like this is what people do not realize, and if you do not have the safety training, it is very advised to get it because if not, then you could hurt somebody else. You could save your own life or somebody else's. These topics are all very, very highly covered in safety procedures and other companies. We have to sit down in certain classes. And if anybody else is coming, you have to all be on the same page because these are all very important topics. And like I said, there are lives on the line. A simple crew is usually at least four people and if there's more than one crew then there could be up to 20 or 30 people working on the same job so one wrong explosion or whatever you could hurt that many people um safety is something that you don't want to joke about obviously um it is a big deal you know i mean it, it is somebody's live on the line i got these from the ehs daily advisor it's a 2008 electrical safety problems and solutions as my source. Thank you.